this week's episode of the award winning, award winning, two times, backing it up, <laughs> award winning here for a podcast is brought to you by exhaustion. Sometimes you be so tired of some shit that you ain't got nothing to do but tell the truth. I'm tired of the church. <laughs> if you have not seen that video, and <laughs> then he had a mic back like, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there is this viral video of this young man um, who has been called up to the altar for his testimony. Mm-hmm. And uh, his testimony is, I'm tired of this church. Yeah. And um, I saw some Bible thumpers on the internet uh, saying, how can he be so tired of the church if he don't never go to the church? And for that and to them, I will say this. It don't take too long to be tired of misogyny. Did you get my Google calendar? What do you... Okay, but finish. Okay. Misogyny, homophobia, pedophilia, and fictional characters. It can all be quite exhausting. The Book of Fables, come on. So, um, I understood exactly what he meant when he said, I'm tired of this church. <laughs> because it's a mood. It's a forever mood for a lot of people. I be wanting to watch cartoons. I'm tired of this church. <laughs> Bible study. The, the lady in front of me smells I, bad. I read enough fairy tales in school. And I know my grandmama is acting. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all running laps for? Y'all athletes. But y'all got high blood pressure? Oh, Ain't okay. you dis- disabled? Okay. I'm calling the people. <laughs> My name is the Superman T A H. Children are good for calling the people. <laughs> <laughs> you Children mean. are good for calling the DHS and the CPS and the what's the three one one? Okay, pick up the phone down three one one. Yes, <laughs> you are late. That's, that's I know. I, I tequila. Woo. Chile. My name is the Superman T H E E S U P A M A N, aka the gay survivor of Bird Box. BKA the booty and boardroom bully. My name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet. It's not Robert. Ronald Matters. <laughs> <laughs> I was like Rodney. Who he say? Robert. Thank you guys so much for those voicemails you guys sent to us. We asked for those little cute sexy voicemails that you were sent to Bay. And first of all, I got a peekaboo booty. He said I had a little peekaboo booty, but he still wanna. Um, play with. I was like, you know, okay, I like it. He said my balls were big. I was like, that ain't balls. Oh, but all right. Well, my name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters. I've been saying that for ninety three episodes, and of course, RonaldMatters dot com. You can find me at the New Dukes party in the uh, New Dukes. What that is? It's the free party in New York City. Okay, New Dukes. They got a Google or Instagram. Yeah, you probably can Google it, but it's like they got a kick. The- Probably, but it's like we're all the fine niggas in New York. Go fuck each other. Um, um, okay, it says Dukes <laughs> underscore New Money. I don't know. They, they ain't gonna. Okay, not them. It should be New in in you Dukes. I'm putting y'all up on dollars right now. FYI. Okay, he done did. I'm looking for it. All right. I'm, when am I going to New York? I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Shut my fat ass up. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Our icebreaker this week. It is since we are in peak football season, all the straights are watching Who's football. Watching? I have it. Since we are in peak oh. football season, and I am still boycotting the NFL until Colin Kaepernick's Colin Kaepernick gets a job. And I had to boycott Papa John's, so I'm out here. So it's peak football season right now. The main point. Um, I figured we'd do a fantasy league of the gay version of football. Which is RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars? I was gonna say Beyonce because <laughs> anything else, girl, child. Mm. So we are like four episodes into RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars. Uh-huh. Um, who do you think is going home next one? Oh. And who do you think is gonna be top four too? I can do this top is a three. fantasy league. Okay, I can do top three. I can't do top four. Um, I don't even know who the six people left are. Um, Monet's going home next. We, cause I predicted it. I felt like I did. I was like, Oh, you already have a Latrice week. Royale is going home this week. And the girl's like, thanks for the spoiler. I was like, it's only 8.01 PM. The episode ain't fully aired yet. I'm just guessing. But yeah. I feel like we've seen, and it ended up being that way. Like we've seen Latrice in a gown with some glitter and glamour on it. So, I mean, like, uh, for the challenge, she just really came out with a glittery gown. I mean, like, man, we've seen it already. She's like, but I cinched this time. Ma'am, this all-stars. Just because you cinched this 
<laughs> oh, okay, so you caught up to your season. Which what was are you doing? Three. Was Latrice? she on season three? I love you, Latrice, but that's not it. Um, so Monet is different, but I loved Monet's biker runway though. Mm. She she's showing progress. You know they love a good reality TV shows overall. A story of most improved. Pro, yeah, they love a most improved queen. So, mm, but she's still my pick to go home. Top three is going to be um, Trinity to win. Valentina a strong second. Mm-hmm. Baby, the way she turned out there, Ariana Grande, um, be- she got down there on the floor, and, and, and she had this slit, and she, mm, Val- Valentina has been, old girls to the new girls, everybody know, she is the fiercest bitch to come through the whole, to dot that door, they keep paying the mortgage for bitches like you to come through here, alright, you, you the target customer, <laughs> oh my god, um, let's see, number three, mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Well, my top, well, who I think is going home next, um, okay. is the same. I think it's either going to be Monet Exchange or Naomi Smalls. Oh, Monique is my third. The way that she slayed a brown cow stunning performance, and then she turned around and slayed that um Tina Turner lip sync. Oh, baby, Monique, <laughs> um, put me down. In your top three, because I'm I, I came to play the game. <laughs> I believe she came to play. I just oh, believe she gonna yeah, that's be my top three. I I don't think she's gonna be in the top three. Okay, you said who's in your top so three? I think going home next is gonna be Monet Exchange or Naomi Smalls. Mm. Neither one of them have won. Um, Na- Monet won one, which is why Monique picked Latrice to go home over. That's I remember that Monique had said that Monet had won one. What's oh the, yeah, she won the. Did she win the first challenge? I don't know what she won, but I remember that being the reason why she. Because you know I live for Latrice, but it was some time ago. So, but then Monique's reasoning was because Monet had won a challenge. Okay, and, well definitely Naomi then. Okay, because Naomi haven't won nothing. She's been safe the whole time. And that um last runway uh. Hashtag semi spoiler. I was like, okay, we wanted padded for the gods, and she was padded. I enjoyed the theme that she gave, but mm, mm. oh, Man- Manila could go. No, Manila's not going. Oh, all right now. Come my on. fantasy do not break up my bracket, bitch. <laughs> all right, all right, come on. My bracket is I got Valentina for the win. Oh, I got Trinity as a close second. Oh, and I got Manila in third place. Manila. Is clawing through this competition. True. She has not been safe yet. She's well. She's been safe like well. Once. She's been safe, but she but it been. but it was like girl, you safe because <laughs> we we had to pick the top girls. Girl. And, but she's never been like definitely not in the bottom at all, and definitely not she, been. She was in the bottom once, right? No, Manila was in the bottom. Mm-mm. Tequila. So okay. I'm just no, gonna, it's great. been four episodes. Right. Nope. Um, but I got those three at top. I got them sending Moni Cart home like right at the. Um, Cause we said we were gonna do a fantasy drag. We said we was gonna do the drag league, but then we ain't do it. So. We're doing it here. Oh, for our audience. Oh, I like doing it here. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um. So those those are my three. Am I guess to win? Okay, Valentina for the win, and I pick Trinity for the win. Yeah. Ooh, look at us. All right. Let's see. Who's gonna win? Let's see whose brackets win. Oh wow! Um, if you guys also watch RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars, make sure you list your bla- your bracket below so we know if you're in agreement or you just see something different than we see. Because one of y'all might got Monet for the win. I don't know how. But you, you have don't that. know. <laughs> you you know Sasha came out with the um roses and the petals and things. And That's uh, why I feel like Valentina is gonna kill it because Valentina is gonna be stunt doing. Queen. She gonna she, she gonna do seventeen stunts. RuPaul's Trinity gonna is gonna race. show up like she did, um in her season. Like, well, girl, I'm sickening. I already got this wrapped up. No, girl, it's a RuPaul's reveal race. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna get to RuPaul's best friend race. <laughs> Oh, um, no. okay. Our affirmation this week is hustle like you have no friends and grind like nobody has your back. Um, you were likely born into this world by yourself, except if you were me and you were born a twin. Um, and you will likely pay your rent by your damn self, make movies, make it to the movies, make your next meal all by yourself. So 
grind just like that. Do mm-hmm. not be dependent on someone else. Do not be dependent that a friend is going to have your back. Do not be dependent that a boyfriend or a family member is going to have your back. You have to hustle like nobody has your back and then show the re- results of that hustle. Oh. In 2019, it's going to require the baddest bitch version of you, and you can't be the baddest bitch version of you when you're dependent on other people. Um, I want to add to that. Cool. There was somebody that I saw on Twitter. He's been making his rounds um, on interviews on the LGBT podcast lately. I do not remember his name, and I feel so horrible. I think his TV show is called The Black Sex in the City. I think that's his YouTube show. And he was saying that he's moving to L.A. at the end of the month. He said on January 31st, he has a one-way ticket booked to L.A. leaving NYC. I don't know if it's LGA or the other one. But he said he's moving to L.A. at the end of the month. And the same way that he worked it out when he got to New York City, he knows he's going to work it out when he gets to L.A. And he is excited for his journey. Please be safe in L.A., kind brother. We're going to get to your safety oh, briefing. Yeah. Ooh, wow, yeah, because the girls is dying. <laughs> baby. Endangered species in fucking LA. No, we going, okay, yeah, but I when I read his tweets and I was like, wow, I'm I'm really inspired because you know I end up moving to DC based on the same thing. Girl, I just got to pack my bags and go. It's gonna work out when I get there, girl. It's in God's hands. I know we shaded the church, but then I just turned around and gave the church praise. Well, I gave God, God praise. praise. In That's what should happen all I the gave time. God the praise, but okay, but bypass the damn church. <laughs> Um, this week in Hot Topics, um, Happy New Year, first of all. I know some of y'all um, were pissed that y'all didn't hear from us for a while, but people on Patreon heard from us. They really did leave it in 2018. That was like a 15-minute um, bonus feature. And then we did the Would You Rather. Mm-hmm. That was another 15 minutes. Look, that was a full hour. <laughs> so, wow, 15 and 15 is not a full hour. I bet it <laughs> Wow. Um, look, I'm, look, I'm a writer, okay? <laughs> Math is... Woo. Um, but if you are, were on Patreon, you didn't get a break from us. Um, so I, I implore you guys to check out our How Patreon. How you spell that? I M P L O R. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, is it E M P or I M P? Then I just used another word because I couldn't think of how. Or Google wasn't gonna help you that. I didn't want to Google it. I wanted to be a a know it all. Okay. Very Virgo. Okay. Very Virgo. Um. But one of the hot hot topics that happened right at the end of the year that pissed me off and has still uh, kept, kept it in your nose, kept it in my nose, and <laughs> like it's in my soul. Um, they did a first look for Aladdin. Okay. And- <laughs> You were so pissed you kept it in your notes. Sure did. <laughs> first, first and foremost, like this, I gotta address this first when the podcast come back. Jasmine is not a white woman. Who? Jasmine. Robert. <laughs> wow. Um, Jasmine has always been a Middle Eastern woman in Aladdin. We have had the same conversation with these Hollywood executives time after time after time after That's time. That's a song. Is this Cindy Lauper? Time after time? You are dark-sided. <laughs> um, and... For some reason, they're still tone deaf. Why are we casting a white lady with a shade darker makeup to play a Middle Eastern woman? And it's not even a name recognition. Like at least well, she, it's Scarlett Johansson. It's like okay, well they age right. It's Scarlett. Jo- it's a name. But like this girl that they got, who? She was the Pink Ranger in the last uh, Power Rangers movie. Who? <laughs> <laughs> that was a cast of nobodies. <laughs> what? Um. So. Again, we have a she white woman. She was the woman. Pink Ranger in. They made like twenty million dollars total. <laughs> no, it was like a hundred or two hundred. No, it was like <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> Um, but I will say it again here and say it again loudly. Um, that Jasmine is not a white woman. I am not going to go support Aladdin. I love Will Smith. Whoa, now. we're not going to support. Okay, wow. I might go support it without you. <laughs> Do that. Okay. But that is signing off on what these Hollywood executives want. No. They want you to be like, oh, okay, it's okay. I won't, it don't matter. We just race bended her. Or I could save my money and then make sure Lion King shits because they got Beyonce. Yes. And that's coming out in July. Exactly. Ooh, choices. If I go see Aladdin, I'm going to go sneak into that bitch. No, because I don't want the girls comparing Aladdin, live action Aladdin to live action Lion King. No, Beyonce was in it. We always go see it for the queen. 
So I will not be supporting Aladdin. Oh. I love Will Smith a lot. I don't know. Um, but if I see Lion, I mean um, Aladdin. <laughs> if I see Aladdin, I'll be sneaking into that bitch. Somebody else will have bought me a ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'll be watching it on somebody's fire stick. But I'm not spending my green dollars to go see no white woman playing a Middle Eastern woman. That's not going to happen. Not at all. Especially when we just got through on Gay Olympics too, talking about do trans women need their um visibility. Yeah, that's the word. Oh, that was like five syllables. I got lost. Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, Indian Americans need their vi- visibility. Is it Indian Americans? Is that the right term? Well, just Middle Eastern in Middle general, Eastern, okay. Because we don't know exactly what country in the Middle East okay. Jasmine technically was from. It was like, it's supposed to be Persia, but Persia was cut up in different places, so she could be Iranian. Because their actresses make more money than all American actresses. Oh, yeah, Bollywood. <laughs> Bollywood. <laughs> Bollywood shits. Oh, my God. <clears throat> um, Take my wig off and just set it on the dresser. But I bind it. I come against it in the name of all y'all gods, whichever god y'all pick. I'm just not doing it. Yeah. I bind that. Um, I will halfway take back my comment from 2018. I'll oh. say halfway. Oh, <clears throat> Look at you being honest. Because <clears throat> I'm halfway right. I said that Gia Gunn was going to be getting the villain edit. And she did not get the villain edit almost. She was just the goddamn villain. And that was good. And I wanted to see her continue because it was good TV. It was good for RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars. And it was entertaining to watch. Like, now it's just like, who gonna take each other out first? Hmm. And not say nothing about it and just be sneaky. Hmm. But Gia was like, in girls' faces, playing mind games with him. Like, what do you mean? I'm not playing no mind game with you, girl. I truly love you. I'm trying to build a relationship with you. And then in the confessional, I'll be like, I'm trying to take that bitch down. That bitch had me fucked up like seven <laughs> months ago. And I'm still pressed. Like you about this two weeks. You had to put this as the first hot top. Gia goes like, mm, I remember when we was on Work the World Tour over in um, New Zealand. And that bitch had me fucked up that time after the performance. And so I, when she walked in the workroom, I knew I had to address it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I was like, so you held on for that for seven months? Yep. <laughs> bitch, I don't know what her family went through, but she held on to it. Um, well, she addressed it. She said that Farrah brought a girl around that she had an argument with and told the girl to go away. But why was, why was Farrah bringing this girl over here to me and you know I don't like her? What did you, why did you, why are you starting shit? So since you starting shit in real life, I'm going to start shit on TV. But Gia also confessed on um, the Race Chasers podcast with um, Will and Bella in Alaska. I'm getting she, to that. Oh, she said that. Um, She's not, she wasn't the only villain on the show. Yeah. The villain that is still on the show that will Ooh, always be on the show. A villain is RuPaul. Oh no! I was talking about when they were talking about the Kate who was going to do Caitlyn in Snatch Game. Oh, no. and she said her and Trinity had discussed that beforehand because it was going to be a cute little moment for TV. And so that proved when Pheromone was saying some of us don't have to fake our storylines to get airtime. Mm-hmm. That proved what Pharaoh was saying, but Pharaoh was already gone. <laughs> <laughs> Fair was already hit Got eliminated <clears throat> Gay Star News is reporting Gia Gunn alleges an on air An unaired excuse me mm-hmm. Unaired confrontation with RuPaul On, our, on All Stars um, When Gia Gunn approached RuPaul About uh, his comments About trans visibility on previous seasons And whether Gia was just being a, a totem Or uh, mm-hmm. You know, just a, a, a play, martyr, a, a placeholder yeah. to say, "Look, girl, I did a trans woman on purpose this time." So Gia apparently was trying to have this conversation with Rue. Rue said a few words back, and then they didn't air it at all. And now Gia is off the show, so we'll never see what Gia actually said to her and what RuPaul's response to her was. Mm-hmm. But that is a villain edit when someone is doing villainous things. And it's not being aired. It's like, well, let's protect the the host, and you know, make sure that she's in shown in the best light. I can understand that, but but she needs to explain, like, how did she go from, how did she evolve from, ain't no trans girls ever gonna be on my show. To look, girl, here's a trans. Girl. I just put a holiday. I put a girl in a holiday. I'll holla slay. Yeah. Special. She put um. Sonique in mm-hmm. that and Sonique Slade. I loved her gingerbread custom. And now she put so it's like two trans girls back to back. 
y'all really doing a PR stunt. Yeah. But I also noticed because Gia Gunn said that it was during the after RuPaul announces the challenge, she walks over and say, "Oh, well, I like your idea." Or you know, like, "Stay focused, girl," because just fifth come. You know, like whenever Ru walks around, and, but that's you know, when she. That's but when they haven't them. aired any of those. They haven't aired any of that for the whole season. And I was like, "Wow, they cut a whole segment of the show because they did not want to make RuPaul skip look like bad. when RuPaul had one girl that clapped back." I'm like, because I'm sure. The clapback from Pearl made Pearl look good, and then Pearl clapped back again. <laughs> so they don't even want to give Gia the. Mm. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's, that's why my fave. That's why there's two villains on the show. <laughs> so one. yeah, we can give Gia Gun a lot, but we also need to give RuPaul a little bit too because RuPaul is the one that is hiding those those kind of conversations mm-hmm. that she needs to be having, not with just the drag girls that are working with her. But with the community, because the community mm-hmm. heard you loud and clear when you said, when you said you, no trans girls. They, they Those are not drag queens. And now all of a sudden your position has evolved, but you don't want to talk about your position having actually evolved. So, one, either your position never actually did e- evolve and the producers said, hold on, girl. Um, glad is up our ass. We're going to do this. Or your position did evolve and you just can't defend your argument. It's one of the two. One last thing. I did um, see Gia reveal, and she said multiple. She said multiple places because I've been keeping record. She said, "Being a trans woman, Gia, and then having to portray her drag persona, Gia Gun, off the stage was very draining because you know, like keeping up the cattiness and knowing that you're on TV and you need to." Elevate and escalate because it's All Stars Four. You've already done this, so you already know what the producers are looking for. They're looking for a good TV time, and so being the dra- up playing the drag persona outside of just being on stage, performing, touring, and saying hello to your fans is very different. When you have to come into the workroom, or you have to sit and do interviews, and you have to make sure that you're saying something shady or catty in the interviews or in the workroom. Dropping hints of shade that could work when you go back to do your interview. Like the the outside of the off stage persona was becoming draining as she was transitioning. Yeah, she had just got her first version of her tits when yeah. she was on All Stars Four. Yeah, she 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 was basically saying it was hard to walk and chew bubblegum at the same time because she was you know so deep in her transition and she hadn't finalized her transition. Mm-hmm. It would be different if. She had come for All Stars five, and she was a full mother evangelista. Yeah, girl, the shade still comes naturally, <laughs> but she was really um, what's MJ Rodriguez character? Oh my gosh, I impose. Forgot. Um, I forgot Blanca. She was yeah. very Blanca. Year one into her year mid. one trans yeah. when she came on All Stars four, and so she was still trying to get to. Becoming um, Electra, a fully, mo- a she's trying mother. to, she's still trying to get to become Electra Abundance, yeah. But she had her Blanca right now, <laughs> and that's fine. It's two, it's two villains because it's two villains. That's, <laughs> that's it. Um, <laughs> wrapping it up, it's that, two villains. That segues perfectly into the <laughs> next topic of uh, the dying franchise that is Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, those girls are doing the same thing. They're trying to walk and chew bubblegum. They're trying to create moments create memes, create funny lines, and never have we gotten so far into a season of Real Housewives. Episode 11 next week. And ain't nothing happened memorable. I'm worth talking about. At all. Ain't no t- nothing to put on a t-shirt. You know the girls love telling them the good... What is it? I'm rich, bitch, or... Cash I'm Trump very shit. rich. Cash and Trump shit. There's no... Nothing. There's no legendariness At all. Yeah. So, for... The next season, because obviously this one is just going to be trash. From Shamari going to be back? Let's hope not. Tanya um, going to be back? Let's hope not. I like Tanya. Okay. She's um, went up against Nene twice. She, first of all, she said that uh, Swag Boutique was low end. <laughs> Where's the lie? <laughs> and then the other time, she she went against Nene this week or the week or last week. I like Tanya, though. I, her closet's little, so she's going to have to move. Why does she have a hibachi? Why does Tanya have a hibachi room, but her, her closet is a little escape room? Because <laughs> food is more important. <laughs> I can relate. Girl, if you do it out, it's easy to be able to fit nothing in that closet. Um, so for the next season, if they want to spice it up, 
the way that it is, y'all gonna have to bring Kenya and a side of Phaedra back. They said that lovebscott.com reported that uh, Phaedra is already in talks. Uh, yeah. Appearances. But, appearances. Yeah, but you need the full dynamic. They need to bring a little Kenya back. They need, even if they just both of them friends of the show, and we not give them both peaches because both of them. But would they say, both have said that they no Kenya turned down this season because they would not give her a peach. She said, "I'm not no damn friend to no show, bitch." You looked at the ratings. The highest episode rated episodes is when I was on there stirring the pot. Yeah, and I was on there being Kenya more. I'm not no friend to no show. You're not gonna reduce me. I agree. You, you have to tell a job that. I agree. You have to tell a job that sometimes. I agree. <laughs> But um, I think Kenya is in a place now <laughs> that she would accept being a friend to the show because right now, no shade. All she got going on is selling like the body shapers since and she's trying to get the baby weight off. That's selling all she's doing. Selling exclusives to com. I'm like, People Magazine does not even Radar Online. Like, at least what I feel like Radar Online is juicier than People. Like, People Magazine is like an official... Uh, Radar Online is a little juicier and a little gossipier. It's not a full um, what's that National Enquirer, but oh no, that's just trash. President Trump is tied up in a lawsuit with them right now, so I, also trash. Uh oh. <clears throat> um. <laughs> so do that for the next season, um, or I'm stop watching because this is just boring. Y'all yeah, wasting an hour Shamari, of my goddamn Shamari time. Shamari is still in her season one wigs and. Lashes and I'm not here for it Without the shade at least if you gonna Be dressed And mad at Marlo cause Marlo told the girl You gonna need to put these tank tops up girl It's 3 to 5 million viewers a week You gonna need to be in something Tank tops and Bell bottom jeans ain't gonna get it At least borrow something I mean like that's the Atlanta way Like Get you a stylist Who a stylist Borrow, a stylist in borrow something Shit Go to the sh- go over Cynthia house and, and tell Cynthia. Let me see um like ten of these ten of these outfits. Um, <laughs> I feel so bad. <laughs> She's just not. We there. watched you for ten seasons. I'm gonna stop. Um, well, we are. I am shit. I, um. Anyway, he's so <laughs> southeast and his pink boots. My sister has won 2019 already. Yep, day one. And so, for all the no no films girls out there that you know say, "Oh well, film, uh, uh, film that," this young man, uh huh, he identifies has as male. has taken social media by storm. Storm, he taken it by storm with his acrobatics, his takedown of cis men in his mm-hmm. stiletto thigh high pink boots. In Union Station. <laughs> and I'm absolutely here for it. He is very Southeast. You can hear that in his accent. I I confuse Southeast accent in Baltimore. I can't, like, Baltimore just be so, yeah. it'd be a little more and fucked Baltimore up. Baltimore is a little bit, yeah, I was going to say Baltimore is a little bit more. A little bit more fucked it's up. a little bit more. No shade. Um, <laughs> but uh, he definitely got a Southeast accent. Like, yeah. it wouldn't, he didn't have to say he was Southeast. I knew he was Southeast from the moment he opened his mouth. Mm-hmm. But the nigga is flipping off of houses. Mm-hmm. Um, kicking your mans in the balls and um, putting them on the ground, putting Disney movies to shame, like the Kim Possible movie don't stand a chance. I mean, like we got a nigga in Southeast DC out here, and y'all got Kim Possible out here on the studio set with a budget. <laughs> and his K- his budget is sixty five dollars to his buy the budget. Is, girl, you were supposed to go. <laughs> we got to do it over. I got to flip off the house again. <laughs> I don't got insurance. <laughs> He's so southeast. <laughs> so if you have not seen these viral videos yet, go check him out. He's on Instagram. He's on Twitter, um, and it's on YouTube as as well. So you can just check out. He he trying to get so them checks. southeast represent DC very well. I know it's um, New Year, New Me. So advertise your business on his page because he's definitely got um, viewers going to his Instagram. Um, the Bird Box Challenge is the dumbest challenge that I have ever seen of and all the challenges. we can move on from that because that's the <laughs> truth. There ain't no, ain't no colorful commentary to give. All I want to say is if y'all going to do some damn challenges that waste everybody's time. Do some credit repair. Let's do some Pokemon go to the poll challenges. <laughs> okay. Let's get some people registered to vote challenges. All well, right. That's the goddamn challenge that we need to do. This bird we box need to challenge is We be doing gays with guns because we need to get registered to vote and w- put our guns in our names. Because these, some of us, I don't know if we should have <sighs> background checks. Um, I'm also a woman and I get emotional. So, so that's <laughs> why you should have no goddamn gun. <clears throat> I'm like, watch it, Superman, come get me. Wow. Like, girl, I'm at work. 
Bitches furlough. <laughs> Come get me quit line. Real talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully they rerun the surviving R. Kelly documentary enough times for niggas to actually cancel his rapey ass and stop caping for a molester, an assaulter, a kidnapper, oh. and all around dangerous, depraved ass nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, TMZ is reporting as of a couple hours ago that uh, the Georgia Attorney General is opening an investigation after viewing the documentary. Beautiful. So Should Illinois needs to do the same thing. Confirmed. But he's got a current residence in Atlanta still. I don't know if he has a current residence. No, we got foreclosed because on survival. But North that that one though that one did. He still uh-huh. has other ones. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, that right. one did. It was, he still had <laughs> Breaking others. news. I'm learning as we go. Okay. <laughs> if you have not watched the Surviving R. Kelly um, documentary, skip forward for like five minutes because this is about to be a drag and you don't want to hear it unless you've watched Can it Can I already. say something real quick? Go for it. So, R. Kelly was saying he was going to sue if it airs. I'm going <laughs> to sue if it airs. Day one comes out. He's like, oh, they aired the first two parts. I'm finna sue. And then day two, the other two parts came out. And I, I didn't watch the first two parts. I watched part three and four because Thursday night I was busy. Don't ask me what I was doing. Friday, okay, I got off work and went to happy hour. Came home and took a little sip. And then Saturday, when they had the families come on, yes, we are all mad at the families. We are all mad that they allowed their children to be involved in this. But it was Mother's Day, and the lady had flew out to New York to tape a part of the documentary and she found out that her daughter was in a hotel in LA Mm -hmm. because our killer was going to be out there. Mm -hmm. So she went to the hotel and very traumatic, dramatic story, but she did end up risking her daughter. Spoiler alert. And her daughter was crying. She was like, that was the hardest decision I have ever had to make in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but you have been kidnapped and brainwashed and put in... But, of course, this is like five minutes after I've been rescued. So, of course, you're still brainwashed and think you should still go back. It's classic so, Stockholm Stockholm Syndrome. And so, it was like... She was like... The daughter was like, that was the hardest decision I've ever had to, had to make in my life. And I'm just like, how? But, you know, I also don't have that going on. So, I'm judging from the outside. But for her to be crying in her mother's arms and just telling the story... I'm like, how are Kelly going to sue after this? Lifetime just captured this on video of one of the girls being rescued. It was a scare tactic. He was hoping that Lifetime would be like, "Oh, well, he said he gonna sue. Let's not let's not put it up." And Lifetime was like, <laughs> "I see you. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. I'm about to put this shit up. Let's see if this nigga really got some balls." And they put all the shit up all weekend, and they need to put the shit up again next weekend. No shade. Lifetime don't have nothing more important. They don't got nothing going on. They don't have nothing more important to do next weekend yeah. than re-show this goddamn documentary because if not enough people saw it, I, I, it was record numbers um, for for Lifetime. I forgot what the uh-huh. numbers were, but it was record millions of people that watched it. Um, but do it again. Yes. Because there were, there's still not enough people that saw it. When you, see, still- when you see all those families and they outside his studio trying to do a quote wellness check because they say like if... Mm-hmm. You can do a wellness check if you if you are an immediate relative of somebody and you haven't seen or heard from them. And so they were doing wellness, attempting to do wellness checks. And some police would sometimes and some police wouldn't sometimes. They're like, okay, well, she in there. I mean, she don't got no sores or nothing. But uh, that she we said see. she was fine. So I don't. And it, I never knew that I, about the wellness. It's, you learn so much. Mm-hmm. You learn a lot about law. Um how brainwashing is you said Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. You learn about so much. So it's not just about the R. Kelly situation is the example. But you learn so much about it, he's not a serial killer, but how he's not a serial rapist. Is he? I don't know. Yes. But he he's a serial something oppressor. And you learn how people with that mindset act. So they use R. Kelly as the example, but it's so much to learn. Aaliyah's family is dead ass motherfucking wrong. Oh, that's your faith. Aaliyah is my faith, not yeah. her goddamn Aaliyah family. Aaliyah is your faith. Not not that goddamn family. I want to hear from her uncle. I want to hear from her brother. Because those are the honest voices that have come out of the Halton camp. 
Her mama, I don't want to hear shit you got to say. Her daddy, I don't want to hear shit you got to say. We y'all were with niggas, Aaliyah the whole time. The, no, y'all niggas, was, they were complacent no, as no. fuck. Complacent and complicit. And y'all are trash. Because the second, the second that it was announced that this came out, they released a statement talking about this is trying to tarnish their daughter's uh, legacy. And I can't believe that these um, women would go on here and say such horrible things. You can't believe that they were going here and tell the truth. You can't believe the, that the truth came out that has only been rumor in the black community for so long. The rumor has been since I was in middle school that Aaliyah married R. Kelly. It was like halfway a urban myth. We didn't really know, but now we know. And we know she got pregnant at least once. Oh, she did? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, she got pregnant at least once, had to abort the pregnancy. Um, and her family has done everything that they could over the past week to discredit the documentary. But it only makes them look worse. Yeah. Because your daughter is gone now. She doesn't have a word or a dog in the fight to say anymore. That means you shouldn't either. If a hit dog hollers, that means you are the dog. Y'all the motherfucking dog. Y'all out here hollering about somebody telling their truth because it might damage the residuals that's coming into your pockets that you didn't make your goddamn self. Because it was like 10... So you don't want these other 10, 12, 16 women to tell their story because your daughter was signed to background and her contract was messed up and so the pennies that y'all are getting from black oh, no, no, no. none of this can fuck no. with Aaliyah's legacy no Aaliyah is Aaliyah, Aaliyah. Is Aaliyah. What is, and Aaliyah, Aaliyah truth be told is bigger than R. Kelly Woo-hoo. so Aaliyah's legacy is fine your legacy is what you're worried about that's let's be honest let's talk about it bitch your legacy is what you're worried about so just because you're ashamed that you let your daughter be a victim does not give you license to rewrite history and say oh well no that's not what happened no, that is what happened. You let your daughter be a victim for a check, for status. Um, I still can't listen to AJ num- ain't, ain't Nothing But A Number. The whole album. The whole album. The same. And oh, I grew up listening to it. And you couldn't tell my little 14 or 15 year old ass nothing. And Actually, was it was probably t- 12 or 13. I was... On the spectrum, <laughs> um, that age wasn't nothing but a number because shit, I could be out here dating um twenty five year olds, eighteen year old girls. Age ain't nothing but a number. But now I can't listen to the shit at all. Statutory, statutory. Um, I also saw some dummy bitches um claiming that there was a difference between Robert and R. Kelly. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> They said that they were two what? different people, and you should not blame. Man, one can read, so <laughs> facts, facts are facts. Um, you shouldn't blame R. Kelly for the actions of Robert. And to that, I will say this. All right. If Martell gets arrested tomorrow, oh my god, Superman got arrested tomorrow. So Leah, because that's what I'm writing in the headlines. Well, both I- of them niggas, both of them. <laughs> Both of them going to jail. <laughs> so if R. Kelly or Robert get arrested Which tomorrow, would get to go in. Both of them ain't no fucking separation of church and state here. Okay, when the girls start looking up Prince George's County, um. <laughs> that's not how the law works. The law don't work where you get to cherry pick a person's career and say, "Well, I just really like his music, so I'm just, I'm gonna." Listen to his music and just pretend that well, he's Chris not a predator. Brown, the person in Chris Brown, the music artist, is the same person, but he still is a abuser. Same. What um, the hell? He's at least not on the same path. Uh, R. Kelly still has three to four girls in custody right now, as we speak. The girls were saying, put the address up and let's go stand outside. I don't know how this is going to go. We'll see by the end of the week. And there's... I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a segue uh, into that then, because I, I let R. Kelly have enough. I won't say because we. <clears throat> so sp- speaking of uh, protests or demonstrations outside of someone's home, there was a protest and demonstration outside of Ed Buck's home last night. Democr- Why are they just now saying like Democratic donor Ed Buck? Like the way that this is being marketed the second time around. It's very different from the first time. No, it was the same the first time. It just was he got off because 
he had such close proximity to Hillary Clinton oh. that it was it was relevant at the time. But now yeah. that Hillary Clinton is irrelevant, saying Democratic donor Ed Buck, how do we know him? Because he's a Democratic donor, yeah. like being Young Jeezy's baby, Young Jeezy's baby mama, Latricia. I'm like, why is it so important to put Democratic donor Ed Buck? It's like it's a smear. Is they're trying to associate Ed Smear at the like when yeah they're trying um, to say that look we're all not all of the Democrats ain't good <laughs> which we know that we don't need you to tell us that and you didn't reveal us no tea reveal us why these girls died in his house so speaking of predators if you do not know about the story of Ed Buck um, less than eighteen months ago Ed Buck I won't even just say drug he killed a black gay man at his house an escort. With methamphetamines, which if you have not listened to ninety of these episodes, Ooh, Chile. We, I I've been preaching about this shit. There was a rumor that Ed Buck liked to um, hire black men and um, to party and strap them down and party then and inject them with meth. And watching them have a meth episode is how he got off. That is weird. Well, well it's deviant from my from my. Yeah, don't sexual encounter. Woo. This is the only time that I will allow <laughs> us to yuck his yum because his yum is killing black people, uh, man, black men. Different from my so, sexual prowess, I, I'm okay with. How you. do you get off from strapping men, black men down? Well, he was also having sex with them. It, it wasn't just him looking at them being high. Uh, Jamel Moore was a gorgeous young man. Yes, um, and he was a sex worker. Yes. So. Um. He was offered a lot of money by Ed Buck uh, less than 18 months ago uh, to come over and party and play. Party and play meaning do these methamphetamines. We both going to do these methamphetamines. We're going to get high. We're going to do some sexual acts. And it's going to be some high sexual acts. You're going to get your money. And then we get Mm-hmm. But in Tuskegee experiment fashion, he overdosed this young man. Um, with methamphetamines and killed him. And in the West Hollywood area, there are tons of other black gay men with the same story of what their contact with Ed Buck is like. Uh, and they're so scared of his power, they're so scared of his influence that they will not go on the this record with him. What does he do? That's questionable because his apartment does not look like he has. I'm like, why much. does he? Because <laughs> the white one was like. I be walking my dog and I see so many men going in and out of his apartment. There's and, video. So oh, when they Oh there's video yeah. I love hot topics. I be learning. What? So when they were taking Jamel Moore out, this was less than eighteen months ago, the first young man he killed. We don't know the name of the second one yet. But he was allegedly black and Yeah, over. he's black. No, no, it's not a legend no more. Oh because oh, there was it was okay. like uh one attorney that said it Somebody, at first. Yeah. And then it was it other was news rumored, and then the attorney said it, like the district the, attorney. No, the commercial, said it. the commissioner said it as well. Yeah, now. the com- somebody with powers confirmed it. Yeah, and then his lawyer did a press conference to respond. To I'm gonna get to the lawyer. Woo! That's a, that's it's another. So much. That's another I don't chapter. Know what to do. But first, there's video of so men coming in, and coming in into the apartment complex because they have to be buzzed in. It's uh-huh. one of those type of apartment complex in West in West Hollywood. It's not classy. It looks just like uh, Issa Rae. They're just trying to keep the black people out. Mm. It's not classy. It looks just like Issa Rae's from the um, Insecure. But the same time that he was partying and playing and killing Jamel Moore, he had already set up his second or third or fourth or fifth day. What? We don't know how many it was that day. And this young man was coming up as they were trying to carry Jamel Moore's body out. He had already killed one man. And had another one set up to come in the police had to stop him because they were about to carry a dead person's body out and they were like oh sir you can't come into this address he was like oh well no i I know a book this is all on video i know a book blah 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 we're supposed to be hanging around at this time blah 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 i'm just trying to get into my friend's address and they're like sir you have to get off these premises as previously stated (laughs) come another another black gay man was right about to walk in after they were carrying jamel moore's body out that means this behavior is not no one off. This is a systematic yeah. behavior to target black gay men to be damned with their health if you if they become sick afterwards or if you kill them. I just want to have a good time and spend yeah. six or seven hundred dollars 
and hopefully you get yours. Because there was insufficient evidence to charge him with Jamel's death. But now that there's a second body, in they've less asked, than eighteen months, they've it, asked the, that the first thing. case to be reopened. Yeah. Um. So first, I would like to say rest in power to Jamel Moore and to this uh, the new unnamed uh, unidentified brother as well, yeah. because hopefully you you get to rest in in some type of peace. I know that you may have lived a life of a lot of stress, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety. Um, that you would have had to get to this conclusion of this strange, weird ass white man paying you to come to party and play uh, for money. Um, so rest in power that you don't ever have to fucking deal with that shit again. Amen. And hopefully your example will blow the lid off of this type of culture because I know it's not just happening in West Hollywood. I know it's happening personally right here in D.C. In the DMV area. Because yeah. I have gotten the offers. I don't play them type of motherfucking games. So that's why I don't... I just block nigg- It ain't niggas. Um, <laughs> I block the people that send those offers <laughs> off top. But I know that it's not just West Hollywood. Um, and I'm sure it's not just West Hollywood in D.C. I'm sure it's New York. I'm sure it's uh, Miami. I'm sure it's Atlanta. I'm sure it's... Uh, Seattle, Washington. Fucking Omaha, Nebraska. I'm sure that this behavior is not isolated to population centers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I hope that this blows the lid off of that type of behavior because it's racist. It's murderous. Um, well, and it like shouldn't be word. fucking allowed. Uh, so shout out to Jace Barone and Jasmine Kanick for organizing the protest outside shout of Ed Bucks. Jasmine. Baby it, Jasmine was not having it when the when the look county officials, I mean the councilmen and councilwomen came down. No, because I remember when the first death happened, and I told y'all that y'all need to take back, y'all need to return the money from Air Buck that y'all received. So I know that bitches like you kept your coins from Air Buck, and now you want to come down here as this is a consolation prize when the second black man ends up in the ground. Yeah, so they were. They Baby were, Jasmine was not having it. They were <laughs> protesting. They were protesting, but they had some whites. Um, the West Hollywood City Council or something detractors that were coming out to were. say Ed Buck is a good guy. No. He was out here uh, trying to help the community. No, he wasn't. And they got their ass motherfucking together. Red. They got their ass motherfucking together. Lift their balls on blue. Uh, last but not least with this story, uh, Ed Buck has an attorney that looks like he also parties in place. Is you serious? Yeah. And I, I remember him not being attractive. But not, it, it's not I wasn't just not writing attractive. it home because I'm not looking at people's lawyers like that. It's not that he was not attractive. I it just looks like he lawyer. also was on methamphetamines. A lawyer. And also, while he was giving his interview to try to defend his client, it looked like he was high in that moment. What lay? Um. Oh, he do look. Oh my god! Exactly. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> you is rude. I'm truthful. Wow. Um, if you want to laugh, go check out the video of yeah. his lawyer trying to explain that Ed Buck was trying to help out the community, and he was trying to um, you know, save these young guys. They were already high when they got there. And he was trying to talk them off the ledge, and then they just happened to die uh, at Ed Buck's house. Uh, two in the last eighteen months that he was trying to save their lives. You take girls to the hospital when they overdose on methamphetamine. I can't take you to my. What am I gonna do? Well, so drink this vinegar. It'll keep your blood pressure down. I, I don't. Like, I don't. Well, remember, I don't even know what to offer you. If you I don't remember Ed Buck having a medical degree. <laughs> I, I don't remember him having a therapy license. I don't even know what Ed Buck does. Is he He's like a, a political techno- donor. Is he like a technologies? I mean, but like, how did he get his money? Like, that's gonna be revealed when all this shit comes off. Because <laughs> we don't really know. What does Ed Buck do? We we don't really know, but it's gonna be revealed. All right. Um. So check out the hashtag hashtag arrest Ed Buck because that is the basic that we need to do right now because yeah. as per the video that was shown right after Jam- Jamel Moore's death he is still setting up shit he is still fucking around wow. and getting these boys high and trying to fuck with them and possibly killing them they're dying so he already got two that he's killed let's not give him opportunity to make it three. Oh my god arrest Ed Buck he can sit in jail till we figure this shit out 
And then if we want to, um, you know, put him on a sex offender checklist and just give him a slap on the hand because he's white, sure, girl. But he need to be in jail right now. What's next in Hot Topics? I need to move on. How many more Hot Topics you got? <laughs> I'm scared. The bright news of right. um, the end of 2018, beginning of 2019 is uh, the baddest mixed martial arts fighter in the world. He's so Southeast. Is a lesbian. Amanda the Lioness Nunez proved to the world that she was the baddest. And she is currently holding two division titles right now. One at Bantamweight and one at Featherweight uh, when she beat um, damn, Chris Cyborg. Chris Cyborg has not lost a fight in 13 years. The bitch has been running through hoes. <laughs> Left and right, <laughs> bro. Boy, not- <laughs> this is like the barbershop. The bitch been running through hoes, bro. <laughs> she been, bro. Literally, if you don't know nothing about, it, look up Chris Cyborg videos. She plays no games. I would not get into a ring with her, and I am a man. And I've studied a, mask. a, 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 a couple <laughs> different disciplines of mixed, mixed martial arts. I know, but I country. would never, yeah. never in my black ass life sacrifice myself. Yeah, that's what's going to be. <laughs> and get in the motherfucking ring <laughs> with Chris Cyborg. And so when it was announced that Amanda Nunes was getting in the ring, I was like, my lesbian sister, no. Okay. Just maintain your belt over in your division. Keep whooping girls over there. You do not have to step in the ring with this animal. Chris Cyborg is a fucking animal. She mm-hmm. destroys girls. Mm-hmm. He so, destroys girls. So then when our sister, you got to. I said she. We're talking about real fish. You say Chris and then. Her name is Chris. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> These are both women. Oh my god. Okay, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> so, but when you see Chris Cyborg, okay, how do I put this gently? She's androgynous, more like a China in WWE. R.I.P. China. R.I.P. China. Rest yeah. in power. More like a China. Okay. So imagine a China, but she get to like punch you for real. No, 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 <laughs> no. Because like in WWE, it was like. I'm a fake punch you, but I, you might punch. get like one. But the rest of them gonna be fake punches. Cyborg really punches you. Okay. Well, in the face. Hard. I'm gonna write a letter to my parents now. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda signed up to be in a fight with this bitch. And I was like, oh, God, I don't wanna see my lesbian sister lose. <laughs> Fuck. And I don't wanna see her lose bad. She gotta go home to her girlfriend at night. Her girlfriend gonna have to put ice on all these medics. I was like, we're gonna need a medic. Just um, we're gonna need a home nurse. I was wrong. My lesbian sister came through, punched that hard bitch in the face for 51 seconds, oh. and knocked her ass the fuck out. 51 seconds. It was over in 51 seconds. 51 seconds. Cleared. <laughs> <laughs> My sis was not playing no motherfucking games. Okay. She represents for the LGBT community and rise for us so much. There is no other person in mixed martial arts history that rise for the LGBT community than... My lesbian sister, Amanda the Lioness Nunez. And so I know a lot of y'all may not know who she is or what she does or even what the fuck MMA is. But check the shit out. She rolled that bitch for 51 seconds and was not scared of the most feared woman on the planet. And knocked her the fuck out in 51 seconds. And so if you want some goddamn entertainment that you're not seeing on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh Go check out the fight between Amanda Nunez and Chris Cyborg. Um, the next one I'm going to breeze through quickly because it shouldn't have even been a thing, but it is a thing and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about it. Ellen attempted to absolve Kevin Hart of his sins against the black LGBT community, uh, without being a part of the black LGBT community, LGBT community herself. Um, and she disappointed me. Because I didn't think that Ellen would be so one track minded um, and would not be challenging of someone that had comments that were derogatory against the black LGBT community that we all should be trying to uphold. Um, I wish that she had pushed back. I wish that she had defended our community. Um, But instead, she let Kevin Hart be the victim. I'm not here for it. Um, Our black LGBT children deserve more. If you've been watching Pose, 
If you watch the first season of um, what's the Lions um, on Fox Empire, if you watch the first season of of Empire on Fox, you remember this macho sis man throwing a baby in a trash can because uh-huh. he was wearing fucking high heels. Uh-huh. That is the same mentality that is in a lot of heterosexual black men's minds. I would rather throw the baby away because the baby is playing with dolls. Or literally the baby throw is wearing, the baby away. Literally throw the baby away if the, if the baby is playing with dolls, wearing heels, uh, dancing weird, um, got all girlfriends, uh, sit down to pee, any of that dumb bullshit. That is their mentality. And Ellen rewarded that mentality with giving it a platform one on her goddamn t- on her damn talk show. And then caping for the nigga to take the job that he didn't want because it required him to do an, an actual apology. So I'm so disappointed in her. Um, I hate that she accepted this Real Housewives of Atlanta apology of if I offended you, I'm sorry. You offended me. Just say you fucking sorry. I don't need the if I offended you part. You offended me. We said that loud and fucking clear. You offended me. You offended my community. You know you did. So what is the if about? Outright apologize. He has not done a correct apology yet. I don't want no fucking um, Instagram press release. I want you to apologize to the black LGBT community. End of story. And until you do that, that shit is also canceled for me. I guess it's going to be a lot. I'm going to have to branch out into a whole bunch of other shit because a lot of you niggas is just canceled. Thank you guys so much for leaving us reviews on iTunes. Um, One review that we got from Carlton Fresh. We love you, Carlton. Hey, Carlton. He says, conscious, righteous, and wretched. Thank you two so much for leading so many needed conversations on your show. Thank you for going into details. Thank you for educating. Thank you for entertaining. I am here for it. And we are here for you. Um, The last hot topic is on December 30th, we lost a ballroom icon in Hector Extravaganza, also known as the grandfather of the ballroom scene. He had it tatted. I was like, yes, he got it tatted, bitch. The title is mine. True to true. I'm not arguing with you, hoes. <laughs> ain't, ain't, there's no back and forth. <laughs> you can call yourself whatever you are. You can call yourself whatever you are. Yeah. I am the grandfather of the ballroom scene. Yeah, here we go. Um, And was. <laughs> that's it. That's just, that's it. End of story. I'm, not, I'm done saying period because I'm not giving City Girls no more. My look. timeline was filled with, oh, I took a picture with him once. I took a picture with him once. R.I.P. I met him. He was amazing. Oh, yeah, mine and was just, too. My timeline was full. But I, I, I couldn't let that go. Again, that was one that um, I wanted us to touch on because obviously he was a huge contributor to Pose. Uh-huh. Uh, a huge contributor to Little Kim when she was in her cute days. Um. He was in Paris's burn is Paris's burning. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dorian Corey was the first person that took him to his first ball in 1979. Uh, he continued to own balls after that first ball. He went to the balls and was like, "Oh, this I is guess my this, gig. this is my lane now. This is my function. This is my lane," and owned them until the day he died. Um, he was an extremely outspoken HIV uh, advocate. Of uh, people that were HIV positive and were fighting the battle, um, and we need more like him. We need more like him to come from the ballroom scene. Unfortunately, from my vantage point, it doesn't feel like we have many advocates coming from the ballroom scene. Like we have mm-hmm. girls that are just popular for doing ballroom and for stealing trophies. I'm not stealing. Oh. Snatching trophies. Snatching trophies. <laughs> Some of them might be stealing trophies. I'm not gonna go that far. The page be pulled sometimes. I'm not gonna go that the far. Page it be pulled. I'm just. I'm they just. cousin on the panel. That's what they're they known for. On the panel. So I'm just gonna vote for you because. But be multifaceted. Ooh. You can be the girl that wins the balls, and be the girl that represents the homeless girls that go to the balls. Amen. Be the girl that represents the girls that are homeless. And HIV positive, and our sex workers, um, and are trying to get out. Oh, 
Are we? Yeah, they're, they're, I'll, I'll, yeah, they want to get out of that, <laughs> that circle. Nobody is happy in that circle. I just circle. wanted to see you like, oh, what, what, what is he? I just wanted to see you say that. But uh, the House of Extravaganza was the first Latino house. Mostly Latino house is now a lot more diverse, mm-hmm. but it was the first uh, Latino house where there were none, where it was just all black houses. They were like, oh, girl, you Latino? Mm, Come know. on, diversity. Um, so. Being a pioneer like Hector Extravaganza, being one of the the founders of the House of Extravaganza, that's a life. He lived his life fully out loud and in color. And again, rest in power to Hector Extravaganza. We have lost a great one. We need one of y'all to step up and take his place. This week in social studies, I want to talk about the intersection documentary. Go to RonaldMatters.com. Shout out to these New Year blog posts. Um, Intersection documentary is available on Amazon Prime. It's got 4.5 stars. So it's definitely something the girls are watching and reviewing. Um, In the beginning, it talks about how um, one in 2,000 births around the world um, include a child who is born with both sex or a mixed match of both the x y chromosomes things are where it's really educational hermaphrodites watch the documentary so the documentary can tell you the classy terms but i recommend it because it was really classy um and a lot of parents are encouraged um when your child comes out one parent said like oh they um took the child for two to three days and didn't even let them see the mother you're like how you know what did Gabrielle Union get to do with D-Wade? They got to hold the baby to your chest so the baby could know from Bond. outside the womb that it was okay. Yeah. But they took the baby fresh from out the uterus and took the baby for x-rays. What is this? Is it a boy or a girl? We don't know. And so they were telling the stories about how many times back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, parents were encouraged to um, do surgeries on their children as infants, as newborns. Oh, that didn't stop. That didn't stop. That was still going in the, in the 90s and early 2000s. So, a lot of children had clitorectomies, vaginectomies, labioplasties, all these big words and all these surgeries where the children did not get to grow up and pick a gender that they identified with, where they felt comfortable with, because and all these things had already happened to them before they could even say their own name. Um, one person included in the documentary mentioned that she had over 200 genital exams before the age of 18 as a newborn she had a vaginectomy and because she was at the hospital where she had there was an orthopedic surgeon foot bones if i broke my wrist i go to an orthopedic surgeon an orthopedic surgeon walked in a room and wanted to do a genital exam on her because oh he was just amazed and wanted to see it. Sir, get out of here. Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with my with nothing. My hip, my pelvic bone is fine. Ain't ain't no reason for you to be in my room examining me and looking at my genitals. But a lot of doctors also consult with orthopedic surgeons. So that could have that could have been it. I don't know. But a, a lot of doctors will say the doctor surgeon, said, and I quote, "I'm the podiatrist. I was just curious." <laughs> Oh, well, podiatrist is different. Oh, You're okay. just a foot doctor. Oh, he's just a foot. He don't even get the whole body. Yeah, I, I was going to say an orthopedic, doc, uh, orthopedic surgeon does the, everything. He I'm puts the people podiatrist. Back. I was just curious. Yeah, or orthopedic surgeon puts people back together. Like, he specializes in everything. Yeah. So, and that's so, why they ask for consults. Um, but not it, a podiatrist. It also, ex- um, Intersection, the documentary, also explores how different people found out about their intersexuality. Um, one person said that um, she's a police officer in Atlanta. She didn't realize that she was different until she was an adult and um, one of her girlfriends told her, um, your clit is really big and it's different. You need to go see a doctor about that. And because she loved her girlfriend, she went to go see what it was and she found out she was intersex. And then it evolves over time. One person, when they were 44 years old, I think they were 42, 44 years old, um, as you grow as a human you're you start to have different they started running into like urinary problems because she had identified as female one person in the document had identified as female but then it turns out that they really were male i don't know you gotta watch it it is so good y'all it's i put it on the blog because you guys need to watch it so um and at the end 
it was encouraging parents to explore the nature versus the nurture method. Mm-hmm. And I was asking you earlier, what does that mean, really? So nature means like leave it as nature intended or nurture it along to say, I really want you to be a girl. And so you uh-huh. give them girlish toys. You tell them they're a girl. You make them grow their hair out. Uh, yeah, there, nurture, a lot of that was going on. You yeah. nurture the process to what your expected outcome is. If I wanted a girl, then. But versus nature, I leave it alone and let nature handle it. And if nature says, girl, were you just a boyish girl? You leave it alone. Okay. And so that is the preferred route. But parents being societal norms and yeah i brought and controlling inner six baby and, and and ignorant because you yeah. know i'm sure if my mom brought me home in 1980 um and i was intersex she would not have known what the fuck to do she would have been like well just cut off something and we're gonna make it into something so a part of that is ignorance um and then a part of it is you know control you know parents want to control and even in today in 2019 there are Parents that control their par- their baby's sex through the in vitro process, mm-hmm. like basically picking brown out. eyes. And- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Depending on how much money you got, you can get that far in depth. <laughs> but definitely picking hair. their sex and saying, "I want a boy," and having a boy, um, and I want my boy to predominantly have his daddy's features. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it comes into a whole different argument of um, gender regulation. And whether gender should even be regulated. Nature versus nurture. All right now. Um, this week in sexual health, I'll make it quick. <laughs> uh, for the 2019 tops, <clears throat> the dick of destiny. The who? The, Say it slowly. The dick of destiny. What that is? Like your top I notch. I put that on a shirt. What that is? Because I'd be so confused. <laughs> like your premier dick. Okay. Like this the dick like you ain't jacked off all day. You know you about to fuck somebody's life out of them. Oh, I am. Shout out to me. <laughs> That's the dick of destiny. Like, you know you've been saving up. You ain't fucked nobody in a while. I skip you lunch. Got- On my behalf, I skip lunch because I know he likes to dig I'm around. Gonna get- I'm going to get to that. Okay. But the dick of destiny is like, you're a premier dick. Uh-huh. Even if, if you take... um uh. Erectile dysfunction drugs, you know, you're gonna take, you're gonna pop you a Viagra, Cialis, or a Cialis. Cialis is cheaper. Okay, I was thinking it called economical. Oh, this is too many syllables. Economical. Economically. <laughs> um, if you're gonna do that, like you're gonna be on the top of your dick game. Mm-hmm. Reserve that for a relationship. Ah! Why are you out here giving the dick a destiny? But I'm out here regular waiting. niggas. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. I and haven't so, been in a relationship in like a decade. Reserve the dick of destiny for a relationship. Niggas for I bottoms, don't want to be in a relationship with me because I'm not out here throwing it like I need to be throwing it. Why? Why would you give them? Why? Why are y'all out here throwing it? That's why this is a sexual health topic, and bitch. that's and that's why I'm covering it. All right, here we go. Don't believe bottoms alone. No, I'm not. For bottoms. Oh, here we go. The ass of annihilation. Oh, I like that. This means like the best ass you can give. You know, you ain't eight in two days. Two days. You know, you. Fl- I don't know. <laughs> I just skip <get> lunch. <laughs> oh, okay. What the, the best ass you've the, given? I, the, I know my body, girls. Whatever your regimen is, is like, whatever your regimen is, sure. <laughs> your two days. your full regimen, because you know some some <laughs> girls will do half their regimen. And be like, I'll be all right. His dick little. I'm I'm okay. But he liked to dig though. Some boys like to dig around it. Throw the leg but over. this is the ass of annihilation means you've done your full regimen. You put a little vanilla extract up there. I can swallow that meat. I can I'm about to mm. show the fuck out. I'm about to do all the crazy positions that I know how to do. Mm. I'm about to let him do all kind of crazy shit to me. Lay back, nigga. Let me do I got this. Ass of annihilation. Mm-hmm. Say that shit for a relationship. Why are y'all out here giving that to regular niggas? In hopes that... No, because it's not going to happen. Oh. Is this survey says or... Yeah, I went to the Simon meetings. says Yeah, or... I went to the top and the bottom <laughs> You went to both? Oh, fully verse 2019. And um, it's not going to help. If you have to sway him with the, the dick of destiny or the ass of annihilation, he's not going to be swayed. I like that. That is so sweet. Save that for a relationship. Save that for a nigga that deserves it. Everyone does not deserve the dick of destiny. And everyone does not deserve the ass of annihilation. All right. Sexual health. Um, mental health this week. 
we have a mental health key. Um, I know it's still the winter, which is a depressing ass fucking season. Um, we've gotten past the holidays. Thank you, Lord. I know separation anxiety disorder two whole weeks. And y'all have been separated from us. And so to talk y'all off the ledge, I would like to give y'all a mental health key. One that I know helps me. And I know it helps a couple of other people that I was doing some research with. Um, you should be taking 30 to 40 minute showers. Oh, here we go. Regulating bath time. No, this is not (laughs) your typical. I'm going to work or I'm coming back from work. This is a mental health spa break at home. Can I take a bath? I like to take ba- I like to take relaxing baths. Sure. Baths do it for me. If it's a bath or a shower. Okay. Create it create a spa experience for yourself mm-hmm. that is not your typical shower or your typical bath where it's, I'm going to get in for 10 minutes and I'm going to get out. Yeah. That is a I'm just cleaning my body. You are trying to clean your soul with this concert like that it. we're about to do. I like it. So, um I've created a shower playlist. That helps me a lot when I need to take these. And so, again, this is not an everyday ritual. This is a treat. So, when you say, okay, I've had a depressing ass fucking week. This nigga's on my nerves. My bill didn't get paid on time. Um, work is on my on my nerves. Chill. All of the above. When you just need a reprieve and you don't want it to be alcohol. You don't want it to be weed. Or any other drugs. Can it be both? Can no. I okay. No. I was like, we, oh, we, I'm we, this is 2019. We <laughs> want to cleanse. We want to be clean. Right. We want to cleanse. And so to cleanse, you need to clean. Oh, ooh, oh right. So <laughs> this is a 30 to 40 minute spa in your own bathroom. Mm-hmm. In your own shower or in your own bathtub. If you are not a Patreon customer, you don't get to see the playlist. Our Patreon customers get to see the playlist. So go over to our Patreon right now if you want to go see the playlist that I've already made. That way you don't have to make one for yourself. But if you are, you know, just a little cheap and that's fine. Yeah. You can make up your own playlist. But make it 30 to 40 minutes of straight music that you can sing. I mean, I want you to be in your soul, in Uh the pits, singing to yourself. Nobody in there but you and (laughs) hopefully and the hairbrush microphone that you have singing to yourself Mm -hmm. in the steam of this hot shower or bath also if you would like to invest and make it a full experience a full spa experience you can go over to 64luxury.com they have aromatherapy scrubs for your face and your skin um that activate with the heat and the steam and the steam from your shower or your bath if you just laying in bath and just being lavish Mm -hmm. but it activates and it gives you this aromatherapy they have two sugar scrubs one is a citrus ginger and one is a cafe mocha both of them give you a full aromatherapy feeling and so again this is not your just regular shower this is a me time spa time shower or bath um Get you a water waterproof Bluetooth speaker. Oh. I have one in my shower right now. Okay. That it never lets me down. The water can get on it, over it, under it. It's fine. If you don't have the budget for that. I just use my cell phone to sit on the toilet. I don't but know you, you if you drop that you motherfucker in the, in the goddamn. You know, oh, this thousand dollar iPhone, child, I do take precaution. Okay. But I don't. But if you, you want to take this spa experience to the next level, go on Amazon. You can find a... Um, Waterproof Bluetooth speaker for less than twenty dollars. Let's say they like twenty thirty. Yeah, you can find one, but um, this is a mental health break that you can have at your home mm-hmm. every week to re cleanse, recharge, get your vibrations yeah, together. Yes, you deserve this. Everyone can't go to like the real spa and have like a three or four hour thing. Make spa at home. Bring the spa home. Make these things available for yourself. If you want to get out the tub and do yourself a pedicure, don't leave the bathroom. That's all it is. Just stay in the moment. Stay in the music. Stay in the vibe. And then once you walk that out the bathroom, like oh yeah. Once you walk out the bathroom, you're a different person. You're cleansed. You feel better. You feel you're lighter too. <laughs> and you've sung your fucking heart out. So you sung about that nigga you didn't like, the heartbreak that you ain't got over for two years. 
Mm-hmm. Them niggas at work that you don't like, mm-hmm. um, them niggas at your other job you don't like, you've gotten the shit off of your spirit and you can go more successfully into the next day or into the next week. So that's my mental health key for 2019. I like this playlist too. Yeah. Um, the playlist is lit. Yeah. Patreon. It, it goes from 80s ballads to current ballads yeah. to niggas ain't shit ballads to... I can't wait till that nigga come over here, ballads. Which one is that? Okay, let me see. Mm. I don't see no one. Oh, okay, I see one. Okay, yeah, yes. I do see that. Uh huh, mm-hmm. I do see that. Okay. So, <laughs> if you are not, or if you're already a Patreon subscriber, you will see them um, yeah. tomorrow. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, it's up there now. Please go over to our Patreon and at least for a dollar a month, one measly dollar. You can have don't, access. Don't, don't say one measly dollar in in the world of a furlough with Donald Trump. Oh, one dollar goes a long way. Confirmed. But <laughs> you can have access to this playlist, and you don't even got to make up your own. So I'm taking that stress level off of you. You can just have your own playlist off top. Just listen to that shit you don't like off the playlist. Take off the playlist and put songs that you want on the playlist, so you can live your best life, quote unquote. Yeah. And send us some of your suggestions because I'm sure y'all are going to see it and be like, bitch, how is the playlist without this? Right. And again, the 6-4 like Luxury is also um, inexpensive. You can get um, just a little bit of his gross for like $20 to $25. Yeah. If you want the big ones, it's up to $40, but it's worth it. They last a long time. They're extremely great quality. It smells really good. Like, his stuff is really good. Extremely great quality. Um, locally made for us, by us, by a black gay Come man. Um, he studied chemistry for he years. He just got... Um... A new license or something. I was like, I think he he's an do... esthetician. I was like, he got like the full thing. He just got certified. Yeah, he's an esthetician. Thing. He also makes some fire ass um, edibles, but that's not here nor there. Oh, is that legal in this county? All right, the song for my soul this week. <laughs> song for your soul. Um, the, it's called "If You Don't Praise Him." Oh, girl, by Norman Hutchins, <laughs> and. It opens with, you remember how when your grandmama was in the pews and she would talk to her neighbor and say, if you don't praise them, don't hinder me. And then she just goes into situations about when the bills are due, when your health feel like it's failing, and when things are going on that you don't know nothing about and where where the next check going to come from because Trump is president. Just give him praise and know that you're going to make it through it. And if you ain't going to praise them, don't hinder me. I don't even know how. <laughs> I just don't even know. I was on my um. You my... To, you going to the Koji convocation? <laughs> I feel it. Look, it's returning back to Memphis in 2020. I might need to move back to my hometown. So I was on my churchy playlist for some reason. I think I clicked it by mistake, and then I saw the song um, "Encourage Yourself" because "Encourage Yourself" is one of those songs that needs to be on my shower playlist. Amen. Um, cause sometimes you have to encourage yourself and I received that, but then I clicked on, um, if you don't praise them. And then I was like, oh, put this on repeat. I'm about to shout again. If you don't praise them, don't hinder me. Cause 2019 has a lot of things in store for the doll. Indeed. <clears throat> and if you like that mental health key, um, that's how I'm adding suggestions. To, can we put a little gospel on the <laughs> I don't, some girls need it. I'm tired of this church. <laughs> <laughs> a little gospel. Just give um, <clears throat> about to break that shit the fuck up. Uh-oh. Um, the song for my soul this week is an amazing new song. Um, but again, in keeping with mental health, it will save your life. All right now. Some di- some days things. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say something dick. You were going to say something dick, weren't you? No. Admit it. Mm-mm. Don't hinder me. Wow. You're trying to hinder me. <clears throat> some days. Days. Some days things just take way too much of my energy. I look up and the whole room spinning. You take my cares away. I can so overcomplicate. People tell me to medicate. Mm. Feel my blood running. Swear the skies falling. How do I know if this shit's fabricated? Time goes by and I can't control my mind. Don't know what else to try, but you tell me every time. Just keep breathing. Breathing and breathing and breathing. 
this was my song last summer and, and you- all I got to do <laughs> Is keep on breathing. I told you is. Just keep breathing and breathing and breathing and breathing. Mm-hmm. And all I got to do is keep on breathing. And you're going to make it. Okay. It. And you're going to make it. Ariana Grande put her goddamn pussy on that fucking track. And I am here for it. It is mm. so motivational. Hey, Amen. Um, it is a vibe. It is a mood. It is a depression breaker. If It don't matter what depression you are in. All you got to do is keep breathing. You don't have to do shit else. That rent ain't paid, keep breathing. Yeah. That light bill ain't paid, This ain't the first keep time. Keep breathing. <laughs> that car note ain't paid, keep Woo, breathing. It's been late a few times. <laughs> that nigga cheated on you again, keep breathing. It's another dick out there. <laughs> that friend betrayed you, keep breathing. Girl, Instagram got 100 billion active users. <laughs> okay, the girls didn't like your picture on Instagram, <laughs> keep breathing. <laughs> Keep breathing. That's all they you got to do. They should be a tumbler. Keep breathing. I'm still searching for a tumbler replacement. <laughs> and then I got a notification. I had open tumbler to just see what was going on. They're like, hey, if you would like to check all of your flagged posts, we've put them all in one spot for you. Ma'am, it's all of my posts on Tumblr. <laughs> ma'am, it's all of my posts on Tumblr, ma'am. So Ariana Grande breathing. Um, yeah. Essential. Yeah. And I'll give you all a sneak peek it's on the concert. Yeah, it is. The shower concert. I post. wanted to ruin it because I'm like, bitch, I, t- I told you about this. I, I was going to let you have it, but I'm glad you were honest. Hold my mule. <laughs> What's next for us? I don't even know. Let me see. Are here for it. Listener questions. Oh. Send us your questions to hereforitpod at gmail.com or to any inbox where you can find us on social media. I have posted a send us questions thing and somebody sent us one. And then the story expired, and then your question disappeared. I feel so horrible. But if you sent us a question during the when it was posted on our Instagram, send it again, pretty please. We want to answer your questions. Um, so I wanted to say that I confess I fucked up. Um, this week my here for it is the TV show Pose is four ninety nine on iTunes. Oh yeah. I thought we won the Golden Globe, but uh, my co-host says we didn't win any. So why'd they make it four ninety nine? Well, it's still a win because the girls are gonna buy Pose on iTunes for four ninety nine to show their support, and Pose is gonna slay season two, and the budget will get bigger because the support will continue to grow. So make sure you guys are buying Pose on iTunes. The whole season one is four ninety nine on iTunes. You waste five dollars at the bar. You waste five dollars on child. I didn't realize my Audible subscription had um, refreshed, and I thought I had canceled it two months ago. Um, you waste five dollars doing, you know, how the podcasts and the shows. You waste- oh, here for a podcast merch. <laughs> That's not a waste, <laughs> but because our merch is sickening. But um, you spend five dollars on things that you're child. This drink was trash, so you can spend five dollars get posed on iTunes. Um, my next thing is, I'm not here for it. Um, so it was like December 29th. Trey texts me, I miss you. He led, he led the conversation with that. I was like, okay, well, let's meet up tomorrow. He was like, well, you know, I know it's, um, the New Year's holiday is coming up and my homegirl in town, she's staying in Virginia. So I'm going to be commuting from Maryland to Virginia, but I want to see you on New Year's Day. Be prepared. So, New Year's Eve, I'm like, I can't get too drunk. Because if I get too drunk, I'll be throwing up all day. Then Trey going to come over. I ain't going to be at my best. You have to skip your lunch because you're trying to get the ass oh God! And then I had to, I had did my bottom yoga poses. You know, you got to stretch the legs. You got to move the arms because tops want you to be flexible. I did all my things. So, 6 o'clock come around and Trey ain't, you know, hey, babe, what's up? I'm trying to roll through. And, well, there was no nothing. So, I'm like, well, let me call him. So then he didn't answer the phone. But all his um, New Year's Eve snaps and Insta stories is up. So um, I'm like, okay, well. Mm. So then after he ignored my phone call and my text, he checked in at CVS on Snapchat. He was walking through the CVS looking for snacks. Yeah, are you, is you getting snacks to come over here? What, who, who, you, who, who the bitch? <laughs> so then January the 2nd, I'm returning to work because I'm not on furlough. Um, he was like, hey, sorry about yesterday. No, he called. He texted me first. And that's why I called him. I'm like, 
what the what do you as a woman do you know what i went through to prepare for yesterday oh you know it ain't nothing like that um i'm in a and you know i'm married <laughs> what what in a gay relationship he's like oh and so he's so 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 you got a boyfriend now but you can have a boyfriend on december 29th but on january the 2nd when you half ass when you kevin hart working through your way through this apology now you got a boyfriend new year new me i'm, well, I'm not here for it <laughs> the, the, well first of all i don't mind doing my yoga poses so i can prepare for and you don't mind a married man and i don't mind a married man i don't mind skipping my lunch for some services if i'm gonna receive services i put i have all my ducks in order in a row i dot the i's across the t's and y'all starting out 2019 like this all right y'all won (laughs) y'all won okay (laughs) i'm not here for it Talk about you, you know I'm married. What, what, when did you get in a relationship, nigga? Don't call my phone, nigga. Move on, hurry up, move on before I get <laughs> deep into my emotions. I'm over here. Well, unfortunately, I am also not here for something as well. I text you, I saw, like, mm, Trey coming over. I was so excited, I was like, ooh, I know Martell likes hearing my attempts today. You know why I didn't ask? Because <laughs> <laughs> I know it didn't happen. You didn't say shit else. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not here for um, Chika Okafor Who? Chika Okafor was the man that was trying to gain access to his apartment recently uh, that was partially being denied access by another resident in the apartment building um, in the latest Peppermint Patty, Peppermint Patrick, Devon, Wild Black, trying to gain access uh, to the building. Chika Okafor is this fine, tall, thick bearded motherfucker, like just gorgeous. Where's this New York? I think it was Chicago. Okay. Um, but he was berated by his own apartment building in the latest string of. White people just not leaving black people to fuck alone. Mind your business. <laughs> so this white person in his apartment building was on camera um, stating that he's lived in this apartment building for 25 years. And he's never care. he's never seen you before. Where are you going? Well, what's your apartment number? And Chica was telling him, listen, I don't have to tell you my apartment number. Just like you don't have to tell me That's yours. That's scary. Especially with this current situation. I'm not, ooh, come up sometime. <laughs> right. I'm not telling you where the fuck I, I already have a problem with you down here in the lobby. I'm not, I'm not telling you which apartment ooh. I live in so you can pay me a goddamn visit when I'm there or when I'm not. Mm-mm. But uh, he did an interview with CNN and had the cutest speech impediment. Mm-hmm. It was so cute. He was so fine. And All like, right. I'm just looking at him. I wouldn't have thought, you know, he had the speech impediment, which you never know. But to see him being so big and fine and burly and just, and then he had like this cute little speech impediment. I just wanted to wrap him up in my arms. And I could not believe anybody, I'm looking for the even a white person, mm-hmm. would have the audacity to run up on his big ass. Because mm-hmm. one... He got to be a smooth 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". He ain't no little person. Mm-hmm. And to project this fake authority, like you was going to move him? I lived here for 25 years. Sir, <laughs> I can't use the N-word because you're not one of us. Sir, move. I mean, like, what do you want, sir? What do you want? I want your apartment number. You tell me your apartment number. <laughs> I'm not telling you shit. <laughs> what How about move? Want? So Chica was very he was a lot nicer than I would be in the situation. Had sure. I been a six four fine ass tall black man and you be a five six old wrinkly white man, I, can tell you I would have moved you I out the t- fucking way. I can't t- I'm not talking to you. Ain't no back and forth, ain't no discussion. Mm-mm. Move. Or you will be moved in the in the words of the Dora Milaje. Move or you will be moved. Um so I'm absolutely not here for the treatment of Chica Okafor. Um just gorgeous, gorgeous man. So his, he did not deserve his attractiveness. This it, uh, it, 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 com- very... it, com- it compounded the issue. Okay. So 
it, there is already an issue. He didn't look like he did, wasn't dressed in all black and oh, sporting an AK forty seven. No, it was just him and a homeboy. I'm like, what, sir? Okay, I don't look like no threat, sir. What are you talking about? But <laughs> the lens that white America sees him in is still scary. I see him and I want to impregnate me, sir. <laughs> do different things. He don't scare me in no scary way. He scared me in a, well, I'm going to have to marry this nigga way. I'm going to have to skip lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, He's that kind of scary to me. I can eat lunch. I can eat dinner afterwards. I can... Fuck that or shit. Oh, he might be here. Skip dinner too. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm not here for the tree bit of Chico Okafor. <laughs> He's too fine for this shit. And you don't have to be fine to um, deserve good treatment across the goddamn country, especially when you pay your goddamn high ass rent. Um, so What's whether your apartment he was number? so whether he was fine or not, he didn't deserve this treatment. Sir, but he's fine on top of this, so he really don't motherfucking deserve this treatment. <laughs> um, I'm not here for it. It's time for our last call. My last call goes to the video game Overwatch, who added their second queer character known as Soldier 75, a.k.a. Jack. Now, I don't know if this <laughs> if Overwatch is available on PS4 or PS3 or Xbox 360. I don't know. But I'm here for the queer character getting their shine. And it's the second queer character. So, according to the story, Jack um, is cited as reminiscing over his lover named Vincent. Jack gave up Vincent um, due for his duty to his country, and Jack is quoted saying, "I'm trying to protect people like him because Vincent is such a great man, and you know, like such a great American, and well, I don't know if they're fighting for America or whatever their country they're fighting for in the game." Um, so shout out to Jack for being an LGBT soldier in this video game, and um, the girls are excited that this queer character is there. Um, and he's a soldier fighting for rights for all Americans, no matter their gender identity or no matter their sexual whatever. Yeah, get up. I'm suing them for um, copyright infringement. That was my story. Because you, <laughs> you gave up love for your duty to your country. But So shout out to Overwatch. That video game is my last call this week. <clears throat> my last call this week is to late to the late. Great. Why are you all? This two dead people in one episode, man. It's a few dead people in this episode. <laughs> really. Oh my god. But remembering them is key because I'm they're. To, I'm going to turn on this um, their shower playlist and go de stress. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, but their <sighs> involvement and what they have done for their communities is important, and that's and why man. I highlighted them. I didn't want them to be forgotten. I want to say. Oh, the head book hashtag. Still that. Surviving or killer hashtag. But this is an even better person. Like, mm-hmm. those are all trash people. Trash. Auntie Fee. Oh, my God. Uh, has been gone from us for a year now. A full calendar year. And um, she imparted a lot of great wisdom. Um, she was a great mother. I will say it was very motherly watching her channel. Yes, it, it still is. Very, I still yeah. watch it. I watched her the make spaghetti. Videos. I watched yeah. her make spaghetti the other day and was like, I want my mama's spaghetti. Oh, so that's another layer. Um, the late great Auntie Fee um, cussed all the motherfucking time, uh, which motivates me in my foul mouth ventures on this podcast. <laughs> Award winning. Award winning. Two years podcast. in a row. So I empower y'all to cuss all of 2019 in. The vein bitch. and memory of Auntie Fee. You cocksucker motherfucker bitches. Turn that camera over Bring here. Bring the camera. <laughs> Put the camera on me. <laughs> she was Bring the camera over here. <laughs> Ma'am, this is a cooking channel. We, uh, Mama, I'm trying to show them the food. <laughs> she she still brought her authentic self to Steve Harvey show. Oh, my God. The one time that I ever even watched the Steve Harvey show excerpt. Because I don't even... I don't even deal with her, but I was like, oh, she was on Steve Harvey. I got something to watch. She cussed and still didn't get no cooking done. Daytime TV. (laughs) She didn't even get it. Like, typically, you know, you invite a chef or a cook on 
and you know they got a finished product by the end. Yeah. She was cooking something and we didn't even see the finished product. Well they product. bring something from under the counter and like, oh no, this is what it looked like when they finished. That's not even what Auntie <laughs> Fee was giving. Auntie Fee was giving, y'all motherfuckers getting on my nerves. Y'all y'all fucking All me this up. Clapping. Y'all fucking me up. And all this grease. By the know. end of the episode, Steve had to walk out because he felt like the show was about to get canceled. And you know, there was rumors that it was getting canceled. Um let's hope Ellen can save that girl as well. So in addition to cussing more in 2019, I want you to host to learn how to cook. Ooh. Add to cart. Instacart. All the carts. <laughs> if you need to go to Auntie Fee's channel and go watch her videos, they're immortal. They are timeless. You can learn to cook some cheap ghetto shit and some just regular shit. That regular yeah, she did some ghetto shit like because she made a pizza and she had browned some ground beef while the pizza was in the oven and put some shredded cheese on top of it. Mm-hmm. Now, I was like, oh, this is very Memphis because that's what we did. If you ain't never had pizza that was made with um the, the crust extra- was biscuits, you ain't had pizza in your life. Pizza where the crust was the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> The ghetto. <laughs> Listen, I'm reporting live from Eight Mile in Greenfield, Grand Rivers, and Myers. We we started off the crust with biscuits, and oh. then you put the sauce, and then the meat, and then the cheese. Oh, the whole crust is. I thought you were trying to do a little a Pizza Hut where you know they had the little no, 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 twist no. You just you no, it. you open up a can of biscuits and you melt the biscuits into a crust. Oh, and then that's your because the regular crust is fucking expensive. It's expensive. You can get a can of biscuits, biscuits for, for ninety nine cents. <laughs> And do beauty on a budget pizza, <laughs> so that's how you know you lived uh, in the ghetto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did, we did do that. Okay, okay. Wow, <laughs> that is my last call. That you cocksucker motherfuckers. <laughs> that is this week's episode of Here for a Podcast. Follow the show on the internet at Here for It Pod, and of course, go to Here for It Pod dot com. Um, there's links to our Patreon. There's content you're only going to see on the podcast. Check out our Instagram because there's only content you're going to see on our Instagram. And definitely check out the... It's in each place. It's something somewhere you're only going to see there. Yeah. So so follow everything. <laughs> you got time. And you follow your ex-boyfriend. And what does he add into your life? From your fake profile. So turn on your shower playlist and... Um, oh, bring your dildo in if oh, you want to do a whole scene. I'm looking for a prostate massager. I've been watching the girls with the prostate. Uh, my new porn um, thingy right now is watching the girls with the prostate massagers in their in their hiney, and they are going up. But I'm just like, I ain't even went up like this with the real thing. So how the prostate massager gonna have me going so up after like y'all? This? Um, the prostate massager can have people going up like that. Yeah. So after y'all subscribe to our Patreon, we'll go um, to the sex store and we'll do a video of the things that we see at the sex store that we might try out. Oh, okay. Re- revealed here live. Okay, wow. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for the amazing awards. We're accepting another oh, award in March. Yeah. In March. So, so um, it's just a whirlwind. Thank you for your support. Continue to listen. Continue to share with your communities. And arrest Ed <sighs> Buck. My Bye. name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters and blah stuff things. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Ciao.